Hi, thank you for joining us. And um, I'd like to introduce you to Lou Adams, who has very kindly agreed to share a little bit of her story with us today. Earlier this week, I received an email from Lou. Lou is the matron of um, an a and &E of a major teaching hospital. And uh, she just shared with me a little bit about the situation that she uh, and her colleagues find herself in at the moment in the middle of this COVID crisis. And she asked for prayer. So it's Lou's day off today, and she has very kindly agreed to have a brief conversation. So we as churches, as Christians across the UK, can join with our local hospitals, wherever they may be, um, in being able to pray in a focused way. So Lou, thank you for coming today. Thank you for being part of this. We recognise that you actually need a really good break. So having to relive some of this, I know, is, is not always easy. Thank you. I wonder if I can start by um, asking a question then, really, what is the reality in hospital at the moment? What are you seeing? What's, what's what you're experiencing? Yeah, so uh, the, the last week, certainly uh, on the south coast, has um, increased rapidly with the amount of COVID patients we are seeing. Um, we, we kind of saw it coming probably a week ago, but it is exponentially increased, kind of doubling, tripling day on day. So even from this week, I've been in uh, most of this week, we started with seeing uh, well what we could cope with at the beginning of the week. Uh, certainly by yesterday, I was having to hold people in back of ambulances up to 10, up to nearly four or five hours at a time because I seriously didn't have the space to be able to offload um, and also have the capacity within the hospital. And that's, that's not just unique to us. This is uh, speaking to my colleagues through other NHS trusts and uh, we're hearing the same stories throughout the uh, South Coast, especially at the moment, and also um, from some of my friends up in, in the north of England. So it is, it's busy. It's feeling quite bleak at times. Uh, and um, we, we are working really, really hard. Uh, but I would be wrong in saying that there isn't an element of fear behind it as well. Okay. And so are you obviously we've we've seen other waves of this. Are you saying that this is a, a new to, for you or are and is this something that obviously maybe hospitals in uh, in the north of England have already experienced and we are now experiencing what they had seen a, a few months ago? Yeah, I mean I can only really certainly talk about my experience on uh, the south of England uh, because that's where I've been working throughout this pandemic when it was declared last March uh, in 2020. Uh, certainly we were privileged, maybe is the right word, that we in the first wave um, were fairly uh, under control. We, um, we, had, we did have COVID patients, absolutely, uh, but we never really experienced what um, our fellow countries um, in Europe did or even in Wuhan that we were expecting. We were kind of uh, waiting for the tsunami that um, although we had those patients, um, it didn't come in quite the force we expected in the first wave. I think certainly since October, when we had our four week lockdown, we were beginning to see numbers increase. But actually, I think we caught the curve a little bit, uh, certainly where I work, and we were on top of it then. Uh, and as December hit, we realised that actually um, lockdown hadn't quite done what it had needed to do. Uh, and uh, the numbers were creeping up. And here we are now in uh, January 2021. Uh, it feels uh, like it's been a long old time uh, and numbers are now doubling, sometimes tripling uh, day in, day out. Um, and, you know, most patients we are treating are, um, we we believe to be COVID related. And it's certainly uh, that that's the picture we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. And the volumes are vast and, uh, yeah, frightening, to be honest with you. Okay. And obviously that's something we're also hearing coming out of uh, London hospitals and in hospitals around the country, uh, right across. And I think you were saying that you're seeing that beginning to change for other hospitals on the south coast and in other areas that perhaps haven't been hit quite so badly in the past. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you've hit the nail on the head. It's, it's a different picture. It's, um, it, yeah, the, vo the volume is definitely much larger than I have witnessed uh, to date. And certainly, uh, speaking to my colleagues, uh, they are also struggling. And I think, you know, London um, and, you know, the, the news has talked about Kent previously. Um, I think we're just seeing that wave slow, uh, slowly spread, spread across. OK. Now, you obviously, uh, you're a Christian. Um, and how have you seen God, uh, have a sense of God within the context of, of some of this horror? Where have you seen God being working here? 
Uh, so yes, as you say, I am a Christian and uh, my Christian faith plays a huge part of my life and, uh, and my leadership, I guess, to a degree. I'm, I shamefully state I'm not particularly overtly open about it at work. Um, it's a very personal faith to me, although I'd happily talk to anyone, but we have to be very careful about um, how we present ourselves and our faith. Uh, so it's it's quite personal and private to me, but um, I pray. I pray day in, day out when I go to work, when I wake up, when I'm driving to work uh, and obviously when I leave. And actually the other day I know that um, I emailed you. We had it was the, it was probably the toughest day. It was the the real notice that things were were changing, that we were really seeing an increase of cases. And um, I was operational that day. I was in charge and um, I walked down to the forecourt and it was it was just jam packed with ambulances. And I. I thought we haven't got space. I haven't got anywhere to offload anymore. I've got I've got no idea. You know, it's not as simple as just filling up empty beds in the hospital. We're trying to uh, separate, you know, COVID patients from non-COVID. We're really trying hard not to um, to treat everybody that walks in. That's the fantastic thing about the NHS. It's open to all, uh, but we don't want to give people COVID. So that's always on our mind. So we're trying to constantly uh, look at how we are juggling beds and things like that. Uh, so actually, it's it's not as easy to move patients across the hospital. Uh, so you have a little bit of a blockage at times uh, and the volumes are greater than our capacity. So uh, I walked down and uh, spoke to some of our team and they had heads in their hands. There were tears in their eyes. And I realised it, it really hit me. This is it. This This is the COVID crisis. We kind of, I think, thought we would never see, hoped we would never see fully. Uh, and we're in it. Um, and so I walked outside and I I didn't know what to do. I really did not know what to do. And so I just prayed and it was the most simple prayer ever. And it was a plea. It was just a Lord, please give us a reprieve, just a small reprieve. And I went back up to my desk, went back up to the operational meeting. You know, you have to keep powering on, coming, coming up with decisions, quick, quick um, solutions as much as you can. And I went back down to the department and the entire forecourt had cleared. There were no ambulances and no ambulances came in for nearly two, three hours. And it was divine. There, there was no doubt about it. Uh, people sat on the ops call and just said, you know, it's a God given gift, you know, it, irrelevant if they're Christians or not. You know, I think it was that it was a, a marked like, wow, there, there is a God in this. And although it's bleak and although it's hard, we have to believe that there is a control. And he gave us that reprieve and gave us that ability to sort out for the next wave and that's exactly it and it you know it's simple and, and no not everyone was cured and it doesn't stop the ambulances coming eventually but that reprieve is what I needed to get my head back in the game to think about the next steps and to give my staff a break so yes it was God given absolutely. Thank you and uh, just knowing that God is in that and in those spaces um, really really helps us to continue and to um, yeah, be, be really consistent in prayer for you and for all the others who are working in the health service at the moment. So I just wondered if you'd like to just to say a little bit about how Christians, how churches across the UK can pray for their local hospitals, for the um, healthcare workers, perhaps in their communities, within their churches. How can we be specific? What can we do about praying? Sorry, I've got a small child that's just walked in. <laughs> Absolutely fine. It's the reality at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> the reality of when I'm not at work, I do have the children. Yeah. Who wants a biscuit of all things? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's brilliant because that's where God is right in the middle of this. <laughs> That's right, she's been rescued. Um, sorry, Diane, can you repeat the question? Just how can we pray? How can Christians pray for um, our hospitals? But also we're very aware that there will be lots and lots of healthcare workers in our churches and in our communities and our families amongst our friends. Some of Christians and some are not. How can we pray for, for you and, and what should we be praying? Great. So I think um, as churches, we should be really coming together and um, absolutely praying for the situation. And um, I know I wrote a few points down, but I think um, I think one of the things is the NHS staff, you know, widely and that, you know, let's not just limit that to doctors and nurses. There is so many people giving so much time. There's porters that are putting their life on the line. There's cleaners, there's domestics. There's I mean, there's just so many staff in a hospital that you can even comprehend. And each and every one of them 
are working their socks off. So I think praying for energy and for safety and actually peace for them as they come into work every day. And for some of them leaving their family behind, putting their kids in school when they don't want to, because we can see the reality of what this virus is doing. I think praying for all of the NHS stuff, I think is really, really important. Uh, so that's, that's probably one of the first things. I think praying for uh, wisdom in leadership, uh, there is no right formula. And I, I realise that in, in some of the decisions that we're having to make. Uh, but praying for wisdom and praying for peace in the decisions that we're making, uh, that uh, it is the best outcome for the patients. And we get to a point that we can cope or have the right amount of capacity for the patients we're seeing. So I think that's really important. I think for the patients is... Uh, is, is another thing for people, you know, we are now in a, in a position that most people will know of somebody who has had or is going through COVID. Uh, whereas probably nine months ago, that wasn't such a reality uh, throughout our community. So I think praying for patients, uh, paying for their peace, paying for their uh, and uh, for their relatives who unfortunately aren't able to be in hospital with them. And that's really, really difficult. So for peace for them at home as well, uh, when they're just having updates through um, people like me who are phoning them and sometimes giving them some pretty terrible news. So I think that that's really important as well. And then I think to go a bit wider, let's look at how we fight this. Um, we are privileged in the UK that we've got a vaccine. Uh, so I think real prayer that this vaccine is the hope that we are looking for, that it is going to um, put an end to this eventually. And I think pray, prayer for reassurance that um, it is the right vaccine and it's going to fight all these strains that we keep hearing in the media. And then I guess finally, it's about a reprieve, an end to COVID and a new beginning. Thank you. And um, so the, No, not at all. Um, we've put some prayer points. Um, if, if to, you don't have to remember everything that Lewis just said. They are on the front page of the Baptist Together website. And we just pop that up there in front of you. If you would like to, to pick those up uh, as churches. In small groups, in your communities, across churches, uh, Lou uh, was mentioning about all churches praying together. This isn't just one group of people. This is all of us together in our communities, um, lifting our voices to the, to the Lord who hears us and who brings hope. And that's certainly something you know, Lou has been able to express a little bit, that actually as Christians, we do have that, that hope, that sense that God is there, even in the darkest of places. So I just encourage people to get together, to pray. When I say get together, obviously that's got to be virtual. So please make please. sure that it's virtual. Yeah, absolutely. So use all the technology that we've been learning over the last um, last nine months, a year, to perhaps connect with, with your friends. Um, maybe just pray on your own at home as well. Please, God hears all our prayers, just being quietly there on our own. Um, and it's the thing that we can do to support and to love and to, to help and to walk that journey alongside. We thank you so much for uh, just joining us today. Um, we want to just pray for you. Would it be okay if I prayed for you now and for Absolutely. your colleagues in the hospital? I'd love to be able to do that, thank you. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for the work of um, all the staff across the NHS today. Lord, we lift them to you. We uh, think of the hospitals and the health centers close to where each one of us lives, and we lift that name before you. And I want to thank you for Lou being with us today. I want to thank you for the work that she has been doing, for the work that uh, the staff around her have been doing, and for the work of busy A&E and um, ICUs at the moment. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for your deep refreshing and your strength to rest with staff today and Lord we acknowledge that you are Lord you are sovereign and we thank you and we glorify you in all of that and so we just say to you who is able to do immeasurably more than we can possibly ask or imagine we give you the glory in the name of Jesus Christ amen amen thank you thank Lou you. thanks for having me okay yeah, take, take care, care. Bye. bye bye, bye.